Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of True Yarn with Basi Ubaha, the biggest podcast online. So today I'll be talking about the fear of starting. Ah, that fear taking that step into the unknown you have played it out in your head how the business is going to look so good how that move is going to make you a different person a better person but take the first step it's hard you are feeling overwhelmed like what if it happens what if all you are thinking of doesn't come or doesn't appear the way it did when you were thinking about it so I, I i know that feeling i can relate with it because i have been there before trust me i remember a while back i was a teenager then there was an uncle of mine very amazing man he used to buy a couple of stuff for us while growing up but there was something he always is to do he would buy a ton of books and i would ask myself why will he buy so many books but truth is one day i just i, I just told myself okay try one and the very first one i read said Why not take out time from watching so much TV and reading and see how far you develop yourself? And I said, oh, well not. Or why not? Why don't I try this? And I tried it. And back then it was really hard. Trust me, it was hard. Like watching something for just... So I told myself, I limited myself to an hour a day of TV. Ah, that was brutal. You might say, ah, bro, that's far reaching. But yeah, I tried it. I was a teenager. So I I was like, "Ah, let me just try it. Nothing will happen. So I tried it. I remember watching my favorite TV shows and I know I have to watch them for just an hour. It was depressing. <laughs> but because I said I wanted to find out what the book said, if it was true, I followed suit and I read stories about people that started big companies. And my, my trophy then was seeing the pile of books. Like after I'm done reading one, I just pile them on top of the other. And seeing that alone was a big deal to me. And honestly, I'm not sure I've ever read like that in my life to date. That period was a defining part of my life, of the Basi you know right now. So I read a lot of books about starting businesses and all. And I told myself, well, why not? Why don't I start something? Why don't I start a business? Why don't I go into something that I believe in? And then I was bent on starting a clothing line. I've been playing it in my head. Oh, I need to have a clothes line. I need to have something. I need to run a business. I need to be financially stable by at a particular age. So I said, why not? Why don't I start a business? Well, guess what? That fear of starting, that fear of taking that first step, it was there. And so one on the particular day, I just said, you know what? Burst it. I just took myself. I asked myself, okay, how do I get this thing done? How do I get, how do I move? And then my spirit says, just enter the car and drive. So I just entered the car and trust me, I didn't know where I was going. I just entered the car, I started driving. I said, today I would accomplish something about my dream. And truth be told, as soon as I drove out of the estate, the first thing that came to my mind was, oh, go meet that guy that you always buy clothes from. I said, okay, that's not bad. So I drove all the way down to his um, to his shop and I was there and I was asking him, oh, bro, like, I need to start, I want to start a clothing business. How would you, how would I start it? Like I want to make my own clothes to resell. And then he goes, oh, there's this guy in, there's this guy in his shop. And he told me, oh, talk to this guy. He has a couple of uh, tailors that you can talk to. So I talked to that guy and that guy said, you know what, come with me. And we went together to meet some other guy. And that some other guy was the guy that finally, it was not my tailor. He, he finally carried me to the tailor. So you can imagine the, the string. That first guy, the second guy in the shop, the third guy that carried me to um, meet the fourth guy, which was now my tailor. So when I met that person, I felt like, that day I felt like I'd taken a big step because it was all in my head until I did I did that or I took that bold, bold step. So I remember buying a fabric and giving him to make it for me. And he goes ahead. I gave him a couple of things to do rather and he goes ahead and makes a ton of stuff for me and i couldn't sell jack like i could not sell one i felt so down i felt so depressed i was like you see why i didn't want to start this thing but something that i remembered was the fact that what if it succeeds how would i feel if it succeeds and that was what propelled me to go back again review what i did and how i could do it better because the first one trust me i couldn't sell nothing i ended up selling them at a very low price just to try and i didn't say i couldn't sell everything in all honesty so i went back i looked on i looked at the clothes and asked myself what can i do differently but that was how i said you know what 
i'll design just one really good one and see how well people appreciate it and that's how i designed one and he made it and as soon as i wore it i remember back then going to school i always used to do like some shopping but this particular time i spent most of my money making clothes that i couldn't sell so i just had to make one really good shirt and that was what i wore and as soon as i entered the hostel i remember my friends were upstairs and they were just like ah uba you know how they can heal you and your head will be swelling so like ah uba and that's how they were healing me and there's this particular guy his name is jude i remember he walks up to me i was like ah this shirt is nice because he right from time okay so the fact is i like wearing designer stuff like if it's not a known name that was me or if it's not a known name i probably wouldn't buy it so that's how he came he walks up to me i was like oh is this a ralph lauren i said nope is this a Burberry? He was just calling big design. I was like, no, this is none of none of what you have, have called. And I said, ah. He went ahead and he looked at the color of the shirt to check for the label and he found nothing. He went to the side to look for the in label to see if he could see any um, wash free or carefree signs and he didn't see any. He was like, what is this? And I told him, this is my brand. He says, no, no way. Like, no way. Like, this is so good, Bass. This is so good. So in my mind, I was like, yep i have gotten my hands on something great but remember that i couldn't sell i used part of my my feeding money to try and i couldn't sell those first ones remember right so that's how i knew that oh i had a goldfish i went back to my tailor or i called my tailor back and i said i sent him some money i said please get some really good fabrics and make some more that's how this guy made about um I think 21 shirts and I started broadcasting it all the way in my hostel to my friends in school and everything I was telling them oh I have goods that are coming I loaded my phone calling friends sending messages and lo and behold when the goods arrived all of them or a couple of them came by the house or came by my my room and they were just looking through stuff and to my wildest surprise I sold out that day as a student I remember selling that and I was looking at the cash in my hands. I'm like, this same thing that was almost going to make me depressed like just a couple of days ago is now making me some money. And trust me, that felt so good. So yes, you might feel like that thing you want to start, it, it might fail. But what if it succeeds? That fear of starting is always there. But sometimes, but finally, when you make that move, you start asking yourself like, why didn't I do this all along? Like, was it this? wasn't this? Um, I didn't know it was going to be this easy. So it's always starts, no matter how small, no matter how small. See this podcast I'm starting or I started. I just told myself I was going to, I told myself that I would be consistent with it. No matter what it takes, I'll be consistent with it. Even when it's uncomfortable, I'll be consistent. Because one of the greatest fears you can have is the fear of, ah, had I known, I would have done it. So think on those things, those visions that God has given you that are in your heart. You have even written some out, you have played them over and over again. Are you not tired of playing them in your head? Take that first step, call that contact, make that move. Do you understand? Put that small investment. Sometimes you think always because of the money involved, you can start working on a particular project before you even get the money to invest in it. So make that move today. Fear not fear not god has given you all that pertains to life and godliness and it says you will reap the good of the land god has bountifully blessed you and remember that faith without, uh, faith without work is dead so you have faith or you don't have faith but just try and have work and along the line you will notice that you are building momentum okay so i will leave you with this and if you feel inspired by this podcast Feel free to always share it across social media and feel free to follow me on Instagram at TrueYarn, spelled T-R-U-E-Y-A-R-N. Remember, the TrueYarn podcast airs every Wednesday by 7 p.m. And you can send in your voice notes right here on the TrueYarn app by simply um, downloading the TrueYarn app and then sending in your messages. And I can always listen and probably feature them on an episode. So remember this, you are God's masterpiece and he's not done with you just yet.